So hello everyone and welcome. My name is Kelly Jessup and I'm the Assistant Director for Digital Learning at Yale School of Management and Executive Education. Thank you for joining us for this Introduction to Wealth Management Theory and Practice webinar, where we'll spend some time with the Program Director to learn more about Yale's CPWA program, Wealth Management Theory and Practice. This is one of two online financial certification programs we offer. It's modeled after our successful SEMA online program, Investment Management Theory and Practice. Our program director, Jim Dobbs, was instrumental in creating both programs so he knows them inside and out. Uh, please engage with us during this webinar and don't hesitate to ask questions. Jim is very knowledgeable and this is your opportunity to pick his brain. We may hold questions, uh, but we will do our best to answer all of them by the end of the webinar. To ask questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window. You can submit your question to everyone or just to me, but I suggest you send it to everyone because there are uh, similar questions a lot of times. So please use the Q&A function for questions directed toward Jim. And if you have any technical issues, you can go ahead and use chat and I'll do whatever I can do to help out with that. So now I'd like to introduce our program director. Jim Dobbs is CPWA certified. He is also CFP and SEMA certified. He was a financial advisor for 25 years and ran his own RIA practice before retiring from it to work full-time in his financial education company. Jim has worked with different certifying bodies and universities for the last 20 years, helping build and manage financial certification programs. More importantly, though, Jim has had extensive experience with the Investments and Wealth Institute. He personally helped create the CPWA certification and has served IWI in many roles, including as chair of IWI's Technical Advisory Board. Jim directed and taught in the classroom version of this CPWA course for many years and has now partnered with us to bring his expertise and enthusiasm to Yale and in turn to you. You'll see he's a passionate guy and he's committed to success and he measures his success based on yours. Please welcome Jim Dobbs. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. Can you see and hear me okay? Sure can. Wonderful. Yeah, so let's talk about CPWA, the certification. Let's talk about our program at Yale. Just one of a couple of different ways you can choose to get um, your certification. Just want to make sure that you understand it really kind of from the inside and out. See if it's a good fit for you. I also want to see if CPWA is a good for, fit for you. For those of you who are still trying to figure out, well, which which certification do I go to next? Um, you know, what's the value proposition and all of that? It'll take about an hour, but it depends on the interaction with you guys. So just go ahead and uh, send those questions in. As Kelly mentioned, she'll stop me a few times along the way, and I'll stop a few times along the way as well to kind of knock those out. By the way, if you see your question hasn't been asked yet, even though you asked it 10, 20 minutes ago, don't worry. Kelly knows that we're probably going to get to that, and I'm going to address it, or we'll We'll address it when she um, when she sees fit. Um, so don't worry about that. All right, let's talk about IWI real fast here. Just so you know, Investments and Wealth Institute, that's your certifying body. We at Yale provide education, well, as you would expect. And we in our program also include test prep. That's not the case with other programs. You may need to buy that extra. And Yale is all part of the, the price. Wanted to keep this as simple and clean as possible. But IWI is your certifying body. So you, when you're ready to apply for CPWA candidacy, you'll go through them. You'll fill out their application. You'll pay your candidacy fees and all the other fees. We'll talk about those in a minute um, to them. And then like me, once you get certified every two years, you'll turn in your continuing education uh, to them, that information through their web portal, and you'll pay your every other year dues. I think I'm paying like 400, maybe 450 a year. There are different options based on what kind of um, resources you have access to, membership, those kinds of things. But you would pay all of that to IWI because they're your certifying body, not us at Yale. If you haven't been to their website, go to it. It's just a nice little illustration here of a lot of different interesting numbers. Um, I think, in, in my mind, when I think of IWI, but they've got a lot of great resources, including for those of you who still have not convinced your superiors, your bosses, you know, what have you, to either allow you to do this certification or to reimburse you for it. They've actually got some nice Ceruli, ITA group, and I think there's one other third-party organization that does industry research on these certifications. 
you know, like who has them, who doesn't, what kind of roles are they in, what's their experience, how much money do they make, those kinds of things. So if you think that will help you get some support from uh, your firm, then by all means, go, go to that part of their website. All right. If you haven't been on their website, if you have, you've probably seen they have scholarships. They rolled these out at least two or three years ago, and they continue to offer these. But look, with scholarship ranges of one to $5,000, and here's your who is eligible on the left-hand side. If you think you might uh, qualify for any of these, I would recommend you jump on there. It's no obligation. Spend the 10 minutes it takes to fill out that application and turn it in. Now, you'll do that before you apply for candidacy. So this would actually be your first step. If you even think for a minute, you might get one of these scholarships. They're pretty big, so I think that's worth 10 minutes for just a chance. Then spend 10 minutes. This is actually the longest part of the process. I've seen it take two or three weeks to get these back and uh, from from candidates who then told me, look, it took me a week, it took me two weeks, it took me three weeks to get it back. So if you have any confusion, go to their website. If you have any interest, go to their website, apply, get that kind of ball rolling, no obligation there. All right, I do want to spend a little bit of time, not much, but a couple of minutes on some major certifications. I would imagine you've heard of all of these. There are literally over a hundred now in our industry. It's more like 200. And I think a lot of those are just glorified CE programs, to be honest with you. Uh, the organization puts out some information, they write their own test, they teach to the test. And if you have a decent memory, you're going to probably pass that test on your first attempt. These, on the other hand, are more elite certifications. And I would only add three or four more to this, but these are some of the big ones that you've heard of. So I just want to draw some quick compare and contrast if you will. This is CPWA, so it's Certified Private Wealth Advisor, similar to CFP, Certified Financial Planner, but this is a deeper dive in the challenges and potential solutions that we have as financial professionals to put in front of our clients and our prospective clients. So CFP is really, really wide. Depending on the program you take, it may not be super deep, and it certainly doesn't specialize on the unique needs of your high net worth clients. Now, that being said, the footnote there is with over 300, I think it's 350 or something registered programs for CFP, you have everything from what is basically almost just test prep for CFP to full on two year master's degree programs that take a super deep dive in some of these things. But those are, those are certainly a, a rare exception if you will. So that's why you see in, hi in highlight, yellow highlight there, 18 months, a year and a half on average, more or less, depends on who you're, you're asking, to complete CFP. There's just a lot more material there. CPWA is not less rigorous. There's just less material. I would argue the test is a little harder question by question because there are more applied type of questions on the CPWA certification exam. There's just not as much material to cover. The test is not quite as long as CFP, um, so the whole process is just condensed if you want to think about it that way. SEMA, our sister program at Yale, is on the investment side, Certified Investment Management Analyst, and that is just a super deep dive in investments, not as deep as CFA, and just in case there are any of you on the, the uh, session today that you're thinking well, this is all great, but I do want to be a portfolio manager at the end of the day. I do want to manage a billion dollar institutional fund somewhere or be a securities analyst where I, you know, my pri primary responsibility is analyzing financial statements. Then it's CFA all the way. Yeah, it takes a lot longer, close to four years on average, because there's three tests. You're not going to take them more than one in a year, typically, and most candidates fail <laughs> at least one once. Um, and it's about a seven or eight percent success rate. But if that's what your career path is, then you absolutely need to go for C CFA. So that's why that one is so much longer. And I highlighted that one in black compared to the others, not because it's bad, but because that's just a different level of commitment and it's for a different career path, in my opinion. So hopefully that helps. But if you've got any questions that I didn't cover on CPWA and some of the differences, Go ahead and type those in and Kelly can stop me in a little bit and we'll chat a little bit more about that. All right, now the process is pretty easy. Um, we don't need to spend too much time on this. I already mentioned 
going to IWI to submit your, your candidacy application. Um, they'll run a background check on you, make sure that that matches up with what you put in your application. You'll have that normal U4 type of uh, uh, list, yes, for any of these that applied. Hopefully you got a whole bunch of no's um, on that. And if you have any yeses, obviously you got to explain and they may do some, some homework. So that's the process. It doesn't usually take them more than about a week. Um, they say multiple weeks on their website. I think they're just trying to set expectations appropriately. It's about a week typically for them at IWI to get through your application and approve or deny you. Most people will be approved if they meet the criteria. Then it takes us about a week as well. So you will check the box. It's actually a drop down on their online application that, I mean, assuming we're the right program for you, you're going to check that little drop down for Yale program is the one you choose. You're doing that inside their application. And then once you get approved, they send you an email. Congratulations, Jim, you've been approved as a CPWA candidate. And then they send my name in that case on a list to Yale. They do that two, three times a week. And then we it takes us about a week once we get your name to get you all set up and registered um, at Yale. So that's the process there. It's about two weeks give or take, not counting and applying for a scholarship, which again, you'll want to do that before you apply for candidacy. All right, so once you come into our program, <clears throat> that's what we're gonna talk more about in a few minutes. There's a course portion that is required and then that unlocks the test prep for you. You'll actually, a little teaser here, you're actually gonna spend more time with us studying for the certification exam than you are in our classroom or online classroom portion. Sitting past the exam, we've got a nice pass rate. I'll share more information on that in a minute. And then the last step is they just, they confirm that you passed the exam and you've already done your education. And then here's a bunch of disclosure um, information, licensing agreement, they run another background check. Send that in, they let you know that you're approved and can use the mark. So that's the process um, just, just in terms of administration. So you know what that looks like. All right, uh, this is important. I'm only going to spend a little bit of time on it, but I'll give you two couple of resources here. One, there's more information on our website on the specific topics and subtopics. Um, there's also information on IWI's website. Here's the big picture in terms of what it looks like. Human dynamics kind of starts things off with the way the curriculum goes now. That's their core body of knowledge topics list. There is a four or five, I think it's five pages now, detailed version of this color coded with exam weightings with the subtopics. If you don't have a copy, you can get it off of our website or IWIs, or it may be easier just to shoot me a quick email, even as I'm jabbering on here, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of that document. You are going to need that no matter which program you choose. But I think more importantly, at this point in time, for those of you who are still trying to figure out, I just, it's a lot of money. More importantly, it's a lot of your time and effort got to make sure this is the right certification for me. You definitely want to spend 10 or 15 minutes going through that full subtopic uh, detailed outline, just asking yourself continually, is studying this, is studying this, is studying this, is this going to help me in my practice now? Is this going to help me develop knowledge, skills, tools, resources, all of that to better serve my client? Is this going to help me get my practice to the next level? If the majority of the not just topics, but subtopics, you're answering yes, then from a content standpoint, I think you've got a match. If half or no more than half seem to be on target, then I'd say this is probably not for you, at least not right now. Um, because again, I think it's time, effort, opportunity cost. You don't want to give that up over six months if there's a better fit for you or if this is just not the right time. So spend 10 or 15 minutes going over that detailed content outline, the full one, and I think that will help you on the content side really nail this down. So we start with human dynamics, ethics, behavioral finance, fam family dynamics, intergenerational wealth planning, those kind of things. Then we get into kind of the core of financial planning, but for high, high net worth clients, it's tax, it's investments, it's risk and asset management. Then we kind of get off into what they call specialization. That's their domain three there. And that's working exclusive, not exclusively, but the, the material is exclusive to closely held or small business owners, right? Uh, what kind of uh, entities do they have? What are the differences, tax and legal and asset protection? Why? Strategically, what are the differences? If you're part of that roundtable that's helping a client decide whether to change 
um, capital formation, you need to know what they're talking about. You're probably not going to make the recommendation, but you need to be involved in those conversations. What about the sale of those businesses? That's huge. Your client's worth $5 million today, maybe 10, but their business is worth 50. Huge change, huge, huge implications when they sell that business. Of course, we all would hope to be able to continue to work with them and manage the liquidation event um, and manage those assets under management going forward. So I need to know more about them executives, you know, the world of concentrated stock or even stock options, qualified, non-qualified, deferred comp, all of that. It's pretty complicated legally and the tax ramifications are not as simple as, as you might think if you're not familiar with those rules. You really need to get a handle on that. And then retirement, and I'll say retirement's a little different on CPWA than it is, say, like CFP. With CFP, distribution was part of it, but if your program was like mine when I took it back in the day, it's mostly about accumulation. What does the client need to you know, uh, determine how much do I have to have before I can retire in this certain lifestyle that I want and when and what I need to do on the way and all of that. There's a little bit of that, but the assumption really is your high net worth clients are either well on their way to those goals or they've already met those goals. So it's more actually on the technical side about the distribution of those assets. What's the best way to do it from a tax perspective? What's the best way to do it under certain assumptions? What's the best in terms of asset protection as well? And then we wrap up with legacy planning. That's what you would expect, charitable and estate mostly. Um, and a lot of technical details there, because again, we're drilling deep for the high net worth client that you serve. So on estate planning, for example, it's certainly in the 20s. I always forget what it is. It's either like 22 or 25 different specific types of trusts that we cover in detail. You don't need to know those because you're literally going to make that recommendation to a client, but you need to know these because you go to those client meetings with the attorneys and the CPAs who are discussing those things or strategies and recommending them. You, you need to not only know what all of those are, even if you've never seen one get implemented, you need to know what they are so you can add value to the conversation. And in my situation, and I suspect some of you have already experienced this, when you come out of those meetings, oftentimes my client would say, Jim, we need to do the normal debrief. We just had our family meeting, obviously, with a CPA and attorney, yada, yada, yada. But as always, I didn't understand easily a dozen of those things they talked about. So can we just go back to your office um, or go out to dinner or whatever and and just debrief on those things because I wrote some notes, but I just, I didn't want to slow it down. I was a little embarrassed. You can add tremendous value in saying, absolutely, let's go do that like we always do. And you can walk them through those things, you know, kind of A to Z. Now, again, not making the recommendation, but helping them get some clarity on what those things are. So then when it comes back up in the meeting later, your client's ready to have that conversation and probably has thought a little bit more about it to make a more informed decision. Huge opportunity for you to add value to your clients that I fully expect most of your peers are not doing. It's complicated. Um, there's a lot of technical details. That's why you're here. And I applaud you for that, even considering this, because again, I don't think most of your peers are going to go through this. They would rather just take their chances. Great opportunity for you. All right. I'm going to leave most of this for you to go back into IWI's website. I did pull this one out though because I think there are some things that jump out at me in terms of why a financial advisor, a financial planner, or a wealth manager would consider spending their nights and weekends studying for a certification like CPWA for six months. Um, one is kind of the obvious one. It's, as I just alluded to, it's differentiate yourself from your competition. Most people are not going to go through this. They choose to take the easier path to their detriment, of course. And if you do this, I, I think you're going to come out on top. And you're certainly between the CPWA certification and your experience at Yale, which you're going to put into your bio and your summary sheet and your LinkedIn and all that stuff. I, they're going to know that you've gone the extra mile to make sure you're technically sound. Higher compensation, I actually kind of mentioned that before as well. I think it's ITA group out of those third parties that actually has specific comparisons of what does the average or median CPWA make compared to those who don't have CPWA, but maybe they've got CFP, and then those who don't have either of those? It's, it's pretty great. It's pretty eye-opening. And the, the numbers would 
be impressive for CPWA, as you would imagine. Otherwise, IWI I wouldn't put it up here. But again, a, another point, not just to convince you that this may be worthwhile for you, but if you're the people at your firm need some convincing, I think that could help them because obviously they'll have a vested interest in how much money you're bringing in to the firm. Confidence with clients is huge. That's the one I get most excited about because when I talk with you, after the fact, months or years even at an IWI conference or a Yale event or whatever, that's what comes back and is most impressive. It's great that you got the certification, great that you have a Yale connection now, but the fact that you were able to plug some or a lot of this into your practice right now and serve your clients at a better level, a deeper level, bring in new and better clients that's what's very exciting about this. So we try not to make it just technical. We want it to be practical um, as, as well. Very, very important. Got a lot of great experts um, on the team and the content is important. It's relevant. And I think it's scrutinized because IWI, and if they didn't, I don't think we'd be offering these through Yale. They, they use a, a an accredited certification model in which they actually have a very strict process for figuring out what goes in the curriculum and what is going to potentially be on the exam. So they don't just dream it up. They go out to the industry and find out specifically what wealth managers believe you need to be competent in to be playing at this highest level. So I think you'll 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 like the content. Now, that being said, your check and balance is just to go through that five page document that I mentioned earlier. And after you even get through probably the first or second page, you're going to be like, yeah, this is starting to look like this is right on the money for me or it's not. And at that point, that's OK. You just move on to the next one. All right. Goals and objectives. Really important for you to know what we're trying to help you with just so we can set the proper expectations, just like you do with your clients. Right. Let's let's set the boundaries and expectations for this relationship. The first one is probably the most obvious, and that is just to cover all the subtopics and topics, obviously, in the five-page document. That's over 500 when you count the subtopics. And I'm going to go, it's easily 1,000 when you go sub subtopics, which aren't on that list. So we want to cover all those in an effective but efficient way. So we're not going to cover all of those in both the course and the test prep. Some of them we're going to cover in both. Some of them we're just going to cover in the educational component because we think that's more of a practical for you in your practice element. But if we think for a minute that it could be on the test, we're going to cover it um, to that proper degree in the test prep. So go through all of that. Um, we do want to help you develop those knowledge, the knowledge, the tools, the resources, just to get ahead in your job, take your practice to the next level, raise your technical skills and your confidence that will go right along with it. That one's harder for us to measure. I'll be the first to admit Hard to call that one a smart goal because it's hard to measure, uh, but I think it's important. And the people who started this, gosh, 15 years ago, roughly now, um, the champion of all of this was Richard Joyner. And that was one of his, if not his uh, first priority in terms of creating the first draft of all of this um, before I came in, as they asked me to, as a consultant to help them make a certification out of it. So even if it's hard to measure, I want to have that one in there because if it's not practical and you can't plug it in your practice right now, then like, what are we doing? Um, and then last one, as I get it, because I've been in your seat doing a number of certifications through the years, not just the three that Kelly mentioned. And I was sitting there too. And then eventually, as you get closer and closer to your completion time, date, and sitting for your certification exam, um, it just in your mind, it, it just becomes all about the test at some point. So that's what we're going to, we're going to start big, nail down the fundamentals. We're going to keep it practice focused to some degree. And then once you get to test prep, we're going to flip the switch and it's all going to be about the exam. That seems to be the best way to get th people through. And I've been doing these programs for about 20 years now between CFP, SEMA and CPWA um, seems to work for the vast majority of our candidates. And hopefully it'll work for you as well. Hopefully that at least makes sense. All right, one more slide and we'll see if we've got early questions here. So yeah, as you can imagine with this being an online program, we want flexibility, maybe not to be maximized. I'm gonna say optimized because um, I guess there could be something as too much flexibility. Um, so we give you a year 
Um, so that's your constraint um, from a timing perspective. Your, your program registration fees will cover access to our material in a year. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but it's all online. It's all say asynchronous. It's all on demand. So even if we do a live session, we record it. We very rarely do live sessions anymore. Maybe if we get like Secures Act 3.0 or something, we might do a live session. But even when we do those, hardly anybody shows up. They all just watch it on demand. So virtually almost everything is on demand. You're just going to watch when and where you want to. And that's really important. So like even the videos, whether it be at the course portion or the test prep, you can download those. Those are, They're MP4s. You could convert them to MP3s if you just want to listen, like if you're in the car or on the train or whatever, or you can watch them on your, your phone or your iPad or your laptop. I will say this, like most um, online educational type programs, ours is no different than most of them. Works great on a desktop, works great on a laptop, works just fine on an iPad. But once you go to phones, then all bets are off. There's so many different kinds of phones and applications um, that Canvas, which is a huge LMS provider that we use, well, that's actually the product, uh, they're just not going to update all the different phone apps all the time. It would just be huge time and money commitment. So phone is not best. It's okay, but it's not nearly as good as the, the, the others in that regard. You can download, copy, save, and print any of this. It's open in that regard. You just can't share it with anybody. You paid for it. You are the registrant, um, the participant. So you can use it fine. You can keep it on your file, on your hard drive for as long as you want. Just don't share it with anybody. So that again, allows you to really do this whenever and however you choose. Now we're going to give you best practices and a roadmap. And we're even going to tell you what to do and what not to do, but it's really up to you to move fast or slow and to really kind of gravitate towards the resources that um, fit your learning style the best. All right, I'm going to tease them with this and let's see if we've got any questions, Kelly. Mm. Oh, we just had one come in. Okay, uh, so we have a we have a question about uh, fees and payments. So I'll hold that because I know you're going to cover that. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at procuring this certification, but I have not had the advising experience to have the certification apply to my professional profile after I apply. In your opinion, would it still be practical or useful for me to get this certification three years prior to having the experience minimum? Gotcha. So you're two years in and you know that you can start this, but that's a good point of clarification for those of who might be thinking of a question like that. You can start this. You can go all the way through. You can even take and pass your certification exam, you just wouldn't be able to use the marks until you hit that five-year anniversary date uh, in terms of qualified experience. Um, so that being said, two years in, I think it depends on your situation. A, what you've done in the past. I wouldn't want you to jump in with two feet and just totally get like slammed. You see 100 to 200 hours is very normal for a pretty good amount of the median section of this bell curve, if you want to think about it in a population-based curve. But if you're two years in and you really haven't done, let's just say you were a bank clerk, nothing wrong with bank clerks. They just don't deal with a lot of high net worth clients or at least specialized services for the high net worth clients usually. If you've never taken a course in tax, done any work in investments, don't have those licenses yet even, um, Trust, forget trust, haven't done any work. Well, then you're going to be behind the eight ball. Could you get there? Yes, but I think it's going to take way more than 200 hours. It could take you five or 600 hours at this point. There may be better foundational programs to take because it probably won't take you six months to get this one. It's probably going to take you a whole year and a whole lot of hundreds of hours to get there. So CHFC might be a good place to start. CFP may be a good place to start, but if you already got a decent foundation and you're already up to your neck and working with high net worth clients, then maybe this is, even though it's going to take you longer, you're going to have to work harder than others. Maybe it is. So shoot me an email. If you've got any other particulars, I'd like to have a quick ch chat, I'd be happy to spend five or 10 minutes on the phone with you. See if I could give you some guidance if, if that didn't help. Good question. 
Okay, we have another question about uh, an education requirement. So I see there is an education requirement with a top 25 business school. Uh, if you went to business school and have a master's degree, but you're not sure if your school is actually a top 25, how rigid is that requirement? Yeah, good question. And so there's a little bit, sometimes I think it's because of how they word it on their website. There's a little bit of miscommunication, at least confusion around this. So you're good to go since you already have that degree or degrees. You've met the qualification. The elite or Ivy League or top tier business, business school requirement, that's to complete the education component, which we're going to provide for you. You'll be paying for that coming into uh, CPWA candidacy. There's no way around that. Everybody has to do one of those. So Yale will provide that for you. There is a requirement to become certified, and that is you have to have an undergraduate degree. Um, or they'll take a few select um, certifications in lieu of a undergraduate degree if you don't have one. Um, CFA, CPA, I think is one of those, CFP. So um, there is a way around that, but it's pretty narrow. You can find those exceptions on the website. But I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes people see that and they go, well, I went, for example, I went to UCLA for one of my graduate um, programs. Well, I like to think of that as high end and elite, but it's not Ivy League. <laughs> so good question. Yeah, you're okay. You've got your, your graduate work under your belt. You meet that requirement and Yale will provide the education requirement in terms of fulfilling your certification. Good question. Okay, I think we're ready to move on. All right, so 100 to 200 hours, you've been staring at that number long enough, but it's an important one. If you don't think you have at least 100 hours to commit, then the expectation is probably not realistic. This may not be the program for you, and you may need to do 200 hours. How many people are above and, be, and below that? Well, they're both tails. Um, statistically, we can track that, and they're not they're not fat tails. Is is some terminology that you probably have seen many times before regarding investment returns and historical experience and that kind of thing. But we do have people come into our program and literally within two to four weeks, they're done with everything at Yale and they've taken and passed their certification exam already. So that's got to be way under 100 hours for most of those people because almost everybody who comes in has a job. So it's not like they can just spend 40 hours this week studying for um, for the uh, the course and the exam. But that's that's pretty rare that somebody's going to knock it out in a month. But it is possible. We set it up to where you really don't have a lot of guardrails and constraints along the way. If you want to go super fast and fast track this, you can, if you're, if you're capable uh, of doing so. But for others, it's going to take 500 hours or more. Um, so if you don't have much experience, you've only ever done your your seven and your 63 licensing exams, that kind of thing. And you really just don't have any other education and very little experience in tax and retirement and estate planning and charitable planning, then it's going to take you many hundreds of, uh, of hours. Uh, it, it all depends, as you can imagine, experience, education. I'll throw study habits in there too. This is all online. I'm going to be sending you messages through through Canvas, through the LMS, the Learning Management System, every single week for your first like four months. We're going to send you monthly emails as well. We're not going to bug you by, by phone, but we're going to try to stay on top of your mind so you can stay engaged. But if you're distracted or you take in some big clients and you lose three weeks because there's just no time to study, that's okay. But you've got to have the discipline to get yourself back on track. Again, with six months being a pretty normal um, time frame. Once you get started and you're able to knock out, say, 10 hours a week, give or take, maybe it's eight, maybe it's 12, but let's just say about 10 hours a week, then you should be done in six months. Um, if you just add up that math, it's pretty simple. Um, so we've given you twice that long um, in terms of, you know, getting through the program. We thought, okay, well, twice as long as it should take and seems to take uh, before we ask you for more money, we think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll come back to that in just a second. But this is really important. When we set this up originally, we wanted it to be asynchronous. We wanted it to be on demand. Why is that important? For a number of reasons, but maybe the biggest is you are all in different places. Experience-wise, learning styles and preferences, education, 
excitement, enthusiasm, <laughs> study habits, test takings. You're all over the place. And I would be, if I were thrown into the mix, once again, I would be too. We'd all be different. So I, we want to create a program. We wanted to create a program that allowed you to go super fast if that's what you want and you're, you're capable of that. But if you want to go slower or you need to go slower, I didn't want the fast trackers to be stressing you out. And if it, there's a live component to that, uh, a more defined schedule, that's exactly what would happen. I've done the live in-person programs going back to early 2000s, and that is what happens in that old school kind of format. Um, and I don't want those that want to go fast track to be slowed down by the people who are going to take longer. That's just going to irritate them. So the point is totally flexible on moving through as fast or slow as, as you want. All right, let's talk about money a little bit more. $72.95 is the current price. They change this from time to time. So, you know, I, I'd be shocked if it's the same price in two or three years. It could go up or it could go down. I've seen it happen both ways in that regard. So $72.95 is currently what the price is. And for the Yale program, if you choose Yale, that includes everything. There's no extra test prep to buy, which you will need to do in, in other programs. Um, I just wanted it to be really simple. There's so much material. It could be a really complicated structure and process. There's no need for that. When you get in, I just want you focused on the material. So, so let's just keep it simple. Let's see, keep it uh, clean. That $72.95 buys your education course at Yale. It also includes your test prep to get you through this, the uh, certification exam. Mentioned scholarships already, but again, um, uh, you'll want to go there. Uh, that, that, that's some big money if you think there's a chance of you um, getting accepted. Oh, by the way, one of the not so obvious um, criteria for scholarships is independent firms. Now, if you're a regional firm, then you're in the gray area. They'll just have to make a decision. But if you're in an independent firm, you're probably going to get some money. Um, have, there are a number of reasons for that, but that's one that you might not have thought of. So if you're in that boat, you may want to apply for a scholarship as, as well. No start and stop dates. Well, the stop date is, you know, based on, you know, one year after you get into the program, but no start dates. I think it's really important that you start when you're ready and you're hungry and you've got some motivation. So for example, now might be a good time. Um, summer could be a good time. End of the year, beginning of the year could be a good time. Here's one that's kind of obviously not a good time. So this would be more for CPWA candidates than SEMA. But let's say you work at a firm and you do pretty heavy tax. review. Well, reviews would be more like now and through the end of the year, but compilation and filings. And so you're really working hard January, February, March. Well, you're working hard all year round, but you're really in a crunch in that first deadline period. Yeah, so if you're at a tax firm, and that's what you do. Yeah, starting in February or March, <laughs> you could do it, but chances are you're not going to do much in the program until you get past that April 15th first deadline. So I think timing is somewhat important here because you have a year, which is twice as much as you should need most of you. I would pick that date a little bit carefully. Like if you look out over the next two or three months and you go, hey, look, that looks like just as good a time as any. Well, then go for it. Pull, pull the trigger and, and move forward. But if you're like, I don't know, I've got some big stuff happening in my life or my practice in the next six weeks or two months or whatever, then I would probably wait till you get over that hurdle and then jump in, you know, at that point. Again, not a, a do or die kind of decision, but I, I think that will save you some time, some stress, perhaps. And I would really want you to be able to get started on the right foot once you get um, into the program. And then as we mentioned a couple of times now, but very important, you have 365 days. Now, that being said, remember what I mentioned earlier, you can copy, download, save, print anything. Again, as long as you just don't share it with anybody. You don't need to pay us for another year. You can, you can pay us. I think the price, Kelly will correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's $2,250. Um, I think that's right um, for an extra year. Kelly, did I get that right? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so you could get a whole nother year of access on our platform to knock out your uh, education course um, and study for your test or just to keep studying for your test on our platform. But you wouldn't even need to do that for, here's an example. 
for some crazy reason, you're 11 months in, you only have, and we're sending you reminders on how much time you have, as you can imagine. And you're like, oh man, I only got 30 days left. Um, I, I haven't even finished the course yet, let alone study for this test. That's fine. You just take the next couple of weekends, complete the course, which I'm going to walk you through in just a minute. And then download all the test prep and just study off your hard drive. We've got no issue with that. Um, just don't share it with anybody because you you paid for it. You purchased it. Um, so you wouldn't even need in that situation now to, to pay any more money. Now, we do have some people who that happens to, and they work at firms who reimburse them for these, and they have a nice, generous education allowance. So they're like, yeah, a couple more, gr couple grand more, I'll do that. Uh, but the, the point is you have an opportunity not to, to have to do that. All right. Pass rate uh, market. Yeah, yeah. Jim, if you don't mind, if I can just, just jump in on the payment, because we did have a question about this earlier. Um, do you know if IWI allows um, sort of payment in, in, in part, you know, or do you have to pay in full? Yeah, good question. Um, I've seen them do different things through the years. Right now, I do believe they have a payment plan. Right now, I don't believe it's very long. So I don't think it's six or 12 months or something. I think it's just over a few months they would let you spread that out. You'll need to contact them directly um, and just go into the CPWA and the contact regarding CPWA certification, and they can um, give you some information on what they're currently offering. But that's a great question. You'll need to go to them because they control that part of the pro process completely. Okay, is that it for now? Yes, thanks. Okay. Good question. Keep them coming. Um, okay, so pass rate, you can go to their website. I've given you the little link. You will get a copy of this in the next few days, and all these links will be in there, but you could just go on the IWI website, go to CPWA, drop down to exam information or in exam data, whatever they call it, and then jump in there. They'll give you the latest um, quarterly uh, test pass rates, um, as it were. Ours are pretty high. Um, we work, we're not perfect in our Candidates aren't all perfect, but between the two of us, we do a pretty good job, um, us in terms of staying on top of what they test and what they don't and getting that information to you. Now, we can never, as you'll see on their website, if you dig through the candidate handbook, which at some point you should, um, we can't talk about specific wording of any question that you or I remember regarding the test, but we can certainly talk about what did they test on grads? How many questions did you get on grads? Um, did you get any questions on Cuperts? Um, did you get any questions on double Cuperts? What about Q-tips? What about reverse Q-tips? We just can't go into the wording of the question, but anything they're testing on, I want to know about. So my team and I can make sure we're covering it in what we think is an appropriate way in the test prep material. And on the other side, you guys, our candidates, for the most part, do a pretty darn good job of following our test prep formula, if you want to call it that. We have a five-step process for that. And they do, a, for the most part, a really good job of just following the five steps. It's not complicated. It's plug and play. Just go through the five steps. I mean, it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's really not a complicated um, kind of setup. So just follow our guidance, trust the process, put in the time. You should be just fine. So pass rates, yeah, pretty, pretty high for first attempts. Hey, I did want to mention, if you go on their website, you'll see something jump out at you and you'll see it in a lot of these certifications, kind of an interesting side note or nugget here. Um, first time pass rates. Now you'll see that's also a high pass rate on their website because they just, they don't show it by school. They just show the whole thing. And the vast majority of people who come through and get their CPWA certification come through Yale. So we're obviously driving that pass rate. But look at the subsequent attempt pass rate. So anybody that didn't pass it on their first attempt, the subsequent attempt pass rate is horrible. So as you'll see in our program, don't rush. Follow the plan. Do what we ask you to do. We've been doing this for years and now probably coming up on 2,000 students. I'm pretty sure it's at least 1,500 in that ballpark. Just follow what they've done and you'll be fine. Don't fall into that retester bucket. Doesn't mean you won't get out of it. It just means it's hard. I think the last data they have on there is 14%, but you could go on their website and see. Um, so again, don't do that. Um, just follow the plan. You'll be you'll be just fine. All right. Um, and then, as as I mentioned, we we definitely because of word of mouth, mostly most of the candidates do do choose Yale. Again, we're not perfect, but we're going to work with you the best we can to help you get through. 
Okay, let's talk about a little bit about the course here. I've already mentioned some of these things. So we don't need to spend too much time. We use Canvas. We use CCH and Teleconnect, which is an online resource. We actually have pulled together material from their library to create a custom library of over 2,000 pages. I think it's something like 2,400 now, something like that. That is not your primary learning tool. That is your library. And unlike, now some of you who are younger than me, you're like, yeah, that's what I expect. But if you're old like me, you know, back in the day, well, we studied textbooks and then we went to class and talked about it, took a quiz and then, you know, took a test and stuff. Well, that's not the way it works anyway, uh, anymore for most of these programs, including this one. That library is for you when a video, interactive learning in terms of exercises and assessment activities, when that's just not working in you and you know there's some knowledge gap you need to fill, that's when you're going to go in for the deeper dive, the deepest dive, which is typically in the readings. But we're going to use video lessons just like if you were in New Haven with us. You, you watch those in 11 sections. Anywhere from about 30 to 40 hours is how long it takes most people to get through Watch the videos, take a test. Watch the videos, take a test. You can take those tests, the Yale tests, not the certification exam, the Yale test, um, as many times as you need to. It's open note, open books. We've got some uh, different ideas on how to attack those to get the most out of those. Once you pass your 11th test in the Yale course, you've passed the course. So we don't have a final anymore. It's just broken out into 11 section tests. We send your name to IWI, say, hey, Jim has completed the course. He's now eligible to schedule his exam. They'll send you information on how to schedule your exam. And the magic happens. The test prep material now populates for you. You'll actually see it. Um, it'll just be highlighted and you can't open it until you pass the course. And the reason is I really want you focusing on the core content in the course section before you start thinking about the test. If we can get a nice, strong foundation built for you, once you get into the the test prep material, which is, as you're going to see here, a ton of material. I want you working efficiently. And if you haven't done the foundation at the course level, you're going to flounder in some areas and it's just going to take you way too long. So put in the time up front, firm up your foundation. Now get in the test prep. It's going to make a lot more sense. And now you're just fine tuning details. You're going to go through literally, unfortunately, but fortunately, six to seven hours of me going through the 500 topics saying, See these next two slides and last year they have heavily tested on this. So please know these and even go back into the readings in these couple of areas because you're probably going to see something on it. See these next three slides? It's right here on their list, but I can't even remember the last time they tested on it. So they could, but they're probably not. Just skim through these next three, three slides and examples and practice questions and then just move on. And then these last three slides or whatever in that little subsection it's kind of in the middle. So they get tested regularly, but not heavy, but it's definitely not light. It's somewhere in the middle, maybe flip a coin on where they're going to get one of these types of questions. So that's a way for you to narrow down what you need to study in order to pass this exam. So there's videos in those 11 sections. There are slides, which is coming up on a thousand uh, practice summary slides in that regard. And then practice questions for each of those 11 sets. And then we, just for kicks, at the very end, give you a, a, a formal mock exam, which is time, just like your certification exam and everything. Um, and the reason I only have one of those is I want to break them up by topic first. And in the old days when we actually had two or even three mock exams, hardly anybody did the second, let alone the third. They thought they were ready. So I, if we have a practice question in there, and there are about a thousand of them between these resources, it's important. I have it in there for a reason. I want you to know it. You, you need to understand that concept and or application. And I don't want you skipping over any of them. So we definitely get better participation when we break them up by section. And then just kind of seal the deal, if you will, have you do that one mock exam at the end. So that's the setup. Works very well. Not perfect, but it definitely works for most people most of the time. So I feel very good about that. By the way, we do give you 30, 60, and 90 day schedules in case you want something to start with, like ooh, watch the introduction to test prep video, went through the best practices. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, well, here's just a nice practical exercise if you want to, 
if you want to try to fast track this, plug yourself into the 30 day where we at literally by the hour walk you through how much time you probably need to spend in each of those sections based on difficulty and waiting on the exam. If you're like, no, 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 I need the slower track, plug yourself into 90. And if you don't know, which is probably most of you, you just take the two months, take the 60 day, and then you can deviate. You can go faster or slower as you go through. So that seems to work out very well. All right, CPW exam. Um, I'm going to let you stare at that and let's see if we've got any other questions. Doesn't look like it right now. Great. Um, I'm either doing a great job or I've put you to sleep, but you did have some really good questions earlier. So keep those, keep those coming. You can see it's 135 multiple choice, um, only 125 are scored. It's a 10 beta non-scored items. That's pretty normal as you might expect or have heard on other certification exams. You've got four hours and these days you can do in-person Pearson view testing centers or proctor U. Um, you can do home, home based or, you know, um, distance. Uh, testing. I don't typically recommend that. And if you come into our program, you'll see why I don't. It's okay. And we have lots of candidates of, of ours at Yale that do that and they, they do okay. But there are some reasons to think about it twice before you do the, the home testing. You do need a calculator. It's not heavy, heavy calculations in this program. There's a lot of math, like think tax, but it's simple adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, that kind of thing. You wouldn't even need a financial calculator for that. However, they only allow financial calculators. You can find the list in their, um, well, actually, I've got it here for you. It's in their, can book, their candidate handbook as well. Those two highlighted are easily the most popular ones that we see our candidates using. Um, so I think you can't go wrong with either one of those. But if you're old school like me or have a different one, I've got the HP 12C. Those work too. Um, we're not going to go through the calculations on every um, every calculator, which is now like up to 15 when you look in their handbook. Um, but you do need to be familiar enough with it to like know where present value and future value and how do you input data into your calculator. If you don't feel good about your calculator or getting a new one, go to this website. It's free, tvmcalcs.com. Spend about an hour with the calculator you've chosen. He even has actually a little uh, page that says, what calculator should I use? I'm studying for CPWA, CPA, CFA, et cetera, et cetera. And he even gives you recommendations. So once you pick out your cal calculator, just go through the 12 to 15 examples he has. You'll go step by step. Once you can do that, you should be able to do everything we're going to ask you and more um, in our program. All right, where's my help? This is really important. It's online, meant to be autonomous but you're not on an island. Um, that being said, there are cons some constraints. So I want to put this out to you. We're not priced or built as a four academic um, credit or degree program, as you probably know. Um, so there has to be some limit in terms of what we can and cannot do um, in terms of helping you while you're with us. Now, I've done this since inception of CPWA. Kelly's right. I was brought in to, to create the certification back in the day, many, many years ago. So I kind of know where, especially regarding the test, where you're going to kind of get tripped up or in practice, there are certain strategies that are more complicated than another. So I can get ahead of that with extra material or maybe a short little snippet video or message in the, in the curriculum somewhere just to kind of help you get through those things. So I think we can get through most of that um, in that way. Uh, we do have the discussion board, which is very lively in this program. And I leave the best and most commonly asked questions in the discussion board. It's by section, and then there's some handful of other um, areas that you might want to post in, including what I saw on the test, not specific wording, but like, what did they test me? Did, and you'll see, yeah, it's just a nice way for you to confirm that what I taught you in the videos is, is what they saw. But use the discussion board to... I'm just confused on this cap M thing in the investment section. I've never studied this before. I'm just really struggling and I missed a couple of practice questions on it or whatever. Go into the discussion board in that section, do a control F on your keyboard and type in cap M or capital asset pricing model and go down to where people asked about that. And I left that discussion um, up. If you guys answer the question amongst yourselves and it's right on the money, keeping it in there. If it's not, then one of the faculty members or I will jump in there and clean it up and we'll leave that as an FAQ. 
So that's a really good resource tool for you. You've always got access to, to um, Canvas if you have technology issues. That's a 24-7 thing. It's, I think it's phone, email, and chat, as you would imagine. Um, if you have questions on, I forgot the URL, my login information, that kind of thing, Yale and Dobbs education staffs are available Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Eastern. To handle those, you get unlimited questions there, as you can imagine. Now, the Ask the Expert is one of the most important um, elements. If you ever have study plan or strategy questions, am I studying the right thing, Jim? I don't want to be wasting time, but I just feel like I'm moving too fast or too slow. You reach out. We'll have a phone call with you. Reach out by email. We'll just set up a 10-minute phone call with you, and we can probably get you where you need to be. I want to make sure you have a good, solid study plan, and you feel confident in it. Very, very important. And then the place where we have to limit you is on the content questions. So with all those other resources, I think uh, Kevin just calculated not too long ago, only 2.5% roughly of our candidates over the years have asked 12 questions. So that really doesn't come into play for most people. They don't even ask nearly anywhere near the 12 questions. So I think you're going to be okay there. But it's important for you to know you want to pick those questions carefully because um, you don't want to run out of, of questions before you get to, to the time to take your test. Uh, and then we give you guidance on how to pick and choose those to, to reach out to, to us as faculty. So anyway, just want to put that in front of you. If you've got a fair amount of discipline and motivation, I think you're going to be just fine. But if you think this could trip you up, let me know. We'll talk it through. I want to make sure you make the best informed decision you can. And maybe, just maybe, we're not the right fit for you. All right, I'll let you look through the program faculty online. All of the faculty instructors are there with full bios. Got some great players. Toby's outstanding. Michael Kitts, as you guys know, mentioned Richard Joyner as well. Look, we're all always trying to make this better. And so these statistics, quantitative and qualitative, are very important. I'll let you read a lot more about that on the website. Um, too. We just take this very, very seriously. I, I think that's the most important point I want to uh, make here. All right, this whole time we've just been trying to help you figure out how important is flexibility and timing and scheduling to you, customizing your learning plan based on whether you are audiovisual learner, learn by example and experience, or, or, or voracious reader, doing practice questions, et cetera. We certainly have comprehensive coverage. That's a big one though, motivation and self-discipline. You've got to have a fair amount of that to be successful with the structure we've created. It's going to be a challenge for any of you, even if you're experienced wealth managers. But if you're up for it, we'd love you to come join us, be part of the Yale family. All right, you're going to go through IWI's webpage. You can get there through ours as well, but really going to just go to IWI and go to the register now or apply now button, and that'll get you started. And then here's our contact information. But with that said, I think we got a minute or two here for any final questions if we've got them. But hopefully that was helpful. Even though I know I went pretty fast, I wanted to cover all of this to, to kind of maximize the, uh, you know, your use in time. Okay, I do have someone asking um, maybe to set up a, a phone call with you. So would yep. you just suggest that person just reach out to you by email? Yep, just go ahead and reach out to me at jim at dobbseducation.com or jim.dobbs at yale.edu, either one of those works. And I'll be happy to set up a call with you. And thank Sam for the kind words there as well. <laughs> Great. Okay, we are close to time, but... We have a moment left here. If we have any last minute questions. Yeah, and while we're waiting here for half a minute or whatever we have left, yeah, we just want to make sure that you understand the certification and you understand the process if you choose Yale. Um, and if you're interested in the other programs, do what you've done here. Go to their info session if they have one, call them up and ask questions. You want to feel really good about your decision. That way you really can jump in with two feet and get going once you've made the decision. That's what we're hoping for. Okay, well, that that puts us right at time. So yeah, we just wanna say, um, you know, thank you so much, Jim, uh, for all the information today and thanks to everyone who joined us and thank you for the questions you submitted. 
Uh, as Jim mentioned, for more information, you can visit our website or reach out to us directly with any additional questions. Uh, we will be sharing the recording and slides of this webinar uh, in the coming days, so you will uh, get a copy of that if you'd like to go back and review anything. And to reiterate what Jim just said, uh, of course, we hope to see you in our program, but it's really important to find the program and path that's the best fit for you. So uh, thanks again for sharing your time with us. And this concludes our webinar.